Hi, I'm Timothy Priscilla, and today we are uh, going to do some graphical, uh, some linear programming graphical method for my Math 1325 class. Here's the problem maximize and minimize the objective function z equals 8x plus 3y, subject to 5x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 20, x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 8 x and y are greater than or equal to zero, those are my non-negativity constraints. There's no graphing involved there. That's just saying that we're only looking at quadrant one. First thing we have to do is graph the inequality 4x plus, no, 5x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 20. That means we need to graph the boundary line 5x plus 4y equals 20. If x is 0, y is 5. If y is 0, 20 divided by 5, x is 4. You know, maybe I should make the, uh, no, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll draw the graph right here. I'm going to draw myself my xy grid right here. We're only going to be in quadrant we're only looking in quadrant one because of those non-negativity constraints. So you'll notice I'm just making a nice big quadrant one. So we have zero, five, one, two, three, four. And then four, zero, one, two, three, four, right there. We draw our boundary line. And which side of this red line are we going to shade? We have to choose a point that's not on the red line and test the inequality. What's my favorite point to test? If the line doesn't pass through the origin, I like to test the origin. So I'm going to test 0, 0. Plug in 0 in for x and 0 in for y. We're going to get a 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 20. True or false? False. So we don't shade the side of the line that contains the origin. We don't shade this side because it's false at the origin. We shade the other side. That's this side out here. It's not side. It's this big, huge region out here. It's an unbounded region so far. Notice we still have to graph the second inequality. So I'm not going to make it the graphing real dark. Now the second inequality x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 8. We have to graph the line x plus 4y equals 8. When x is 0, y is 2. When y is 0, x is 8. I agree. So we have 0, 2 and 8, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh oh, got to extend it, 7, 8, right there, draw the boundary line, there it is, now what do we do? We have to decide where we're going to shade, so we choose a point not on that purple line and test the inequality. What point do y'all think I'm going to test? Zero, zero. That would give me a zero plus four times zero. I'm plugging it into the inequality. The thing with the less than or the greater than is greater than or equal to eight. True or false? Once again, that's false. So, we don't shade towards the origin. We shade away from the origin. So, which region will get shaded twice? Which region is shaded twice? I guess the better question is, which region isn't shaded this time? That little triangle right there isn't shaded. Here's my feasible region. The one that would be shaded for both of them is that feasible region right there. So, now we need to determine our corner points. Trace along the 
boundary lines. Coming down here, one, two, three, four. That was the point zero five. That's the point zero five. Is this point zero two going to be a bound uh, a corner point? No, because uh, right there, that's not bordering the shaded region. When you move down here, you have to change to the red line. Here's a corner point. Then you change to the purple line. Here's another corner point, the point eight zero. Well, we need to find that corner point right there. It looks like it's maybe three, one and a half if I were just going to try to eyeball it and guess, but that's not a good way of doing these things. What, what could we do to find the point of intersection of uh, the red line 5x plus 4y equals 20 with the purple line x plus 4y equals 8? What could we do? Maybe we could use elimination. Okay. We had the red line was the red line was 5x plus 4y equals 20 and the purple line was x plus 4y equals 8. I would use elimination. We already have the same number part in front of the coefficient. Why? We need uh, opposite signs. I'd multiply that second equation through by negative 1. So we have 5x plus 4y equals 20. And then we'd have a negative x minus 4y equals what? Negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. Adding the two equations together, we get 4x, the y terms are eliminated, equals 12. So x has to equal 3. Hey, my graph was pretty good. I thought that maybe the x coordinate for that point of uh, intersection would be 3. Now, how do we find the y coordinate? So we know. The x coordinate for the third corner is 3. To find the y coordinate, what do we do? Plug that 3 in. It doesn't matter which one you plug into, the red or the purple. I'm going to use the purple one. x plus 4y equals 8. So plugging in the 3. 3 plus 4y equals 8. So 4y equals 5. That means y is equal to 5 fourths. Well, you know, I guess my graph was pretty accurate to be. I was just sort of freehanding it. I wasn't using graph paper. That looks like, well, actually, it looks more like one and a half, but 5 fourths. Yeah, okay. So we found our uh, three corners. Two of them we were able to look at the graph to determine. The other one we had to use elimination. And we want to maximize and minimize z equals 8x plus 3y. We're asked to find both the maximum and the minimum value. So we come up here. Plugging in 0, 5, we get a z value of 15. Plugging in 8, 0. We get a z value of 64. And finally, plugging in 3 5 fourths. Now, those of you punching this stuff on your calculator, it might be a good idea for you to treat that 5 fourths as 1.25. So you have 8 times 3 plus 3 times 1.25, and that's going to give us. That's a 24 plus a 3.75. Is that a 27.75? And now we need to ask ourselves, do we even know that a minimum is going to exist? Do we even know that a minimum will exist? This is an unbounded feasible region. For an unbounded feasible region, 
a maximum or a minimum exists, but not both. So not both of them are going to exist, only one. Which one will not exist? Let's stop and think about the possibilities. If a maximum exists, then it's going to be 64. 64 is the biggest of the three numbers, okay? I'll put the numbers I'm looking at. 15, 64, and 27.75. If a maximum exists, it's 64. Can you convince yourself that 64 is not the maximum? Take a point like 1010. Is that out there in the shaded region? Yes. 1010 is somewhere out there. You plug in 10 for X and 10 for Y. You get an 80 plus 30. Is that bigger than 64? Yes. So you're able to convince yourself. This is what I'm thinking to myself. 64 is not the maximum. That 64 is not the maximum. Therefore, the minimum must exist. So 15 is the minimum. This is a problem from my math lab. So let's look at the statement of it here. The minimum value is, well, the minimum value is 15. So inside this box here, you would write 15. The maximum value, there is no maximum value for an unbounded feasible region. You have a maximum or minimum, but not both of them. So when I convince myself that 64 wasn't the maximum, I necessarily knew that 15 had to be the minimum. That uh, point that we went through so much effort to get, it wasn't even uh, the location of a maximum or a minimum. So, sorry about all that work. Anyway, I'm going to take a break and go to lunch. Hopefully this will help you with the uh, graphical method for uh, linear programming. Bye-bye.